This Dingo was actually that looked like to be the target focus, and Arc lost, even though he was being the one focused down, he was still able to get a return kill. So, I didn't watch the full fight, but it sounded pretty exciting, and it looks like Arc lost really showing some stuff on this Celeste again. And I'm excited to see it just like Rome is. He always plays phenomenally whenever it brings it out. The solar storms that he uses are fantastic. Atful now being the target oh, focus. Wow, that's a lot of damage coming in. He just overcommitted a little bit too much, but I don't think there's a bleed on him. He's going to be able to get away. Yes, he is Atful with the Ringo, able to just about escape with that one. Didn't even have to burn his boots. And again, we see another fight in the jungle. Very good damage coming out of Arc Lost in space right now. Dingo should be able to get away from this one. Arc Lost just on the very edge of being able to hit those Helio Genocide. Can't quite find it. No. A few um, close calls, actually, this game. Need to quickly tell you something. Oh, hang on. After this fight. I'm in suspense. What is it? Reddick <laughs> He's going to be able to get away. Is so, it about marshmallows being really good with sweet potatoes? Because I already no, know. What it, it's about Genesis is the birth of something new. I know. So, <laughs> you can't have heliogenocide. That doesn't make sense. What you actually have to have is Helios's genesis. It, the Helios is the plural, not the genesis bit. That's so not true. Because it could be genesis. Genesis, rather. If it would be the start of multiple things. Don't try it now in English, thing. Like Pretty sure, No, no, because I had this conversation with another caster last night who, who said that it, it's not heliogenocide. I'm comfortable with you believing whatever you want, but you're wrong. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> hey, if you want to believe that rainbows produce magic, then you believe that. <laughs> That's not a problem, my friend. Speaking of magic, have a look at this. Ares taking a lot of oh, damage. Oh, Dingo. Dingo is also taking a lot here, though. An arc lost. He popped the boots there trying to get closer. Couldn't quite find it, though. Didn't land those heliogenesis. Heliogenocide. There's no heliogenocide. <laughs> He lands the he you could just say heliogenesis, and surely that counts as plural as well. No. Genesis right. is the plural Doesn't matter. Genesis. Anyway, Arclos doing a great job of landing his A ability, uh, getting a lot of damage down. <laughs> um, always a really... You know he's great at landing these skill shots. He's really reliable at doing it, and it just comes back to his proficiency at the hero. He's been playing Celeste for an insanely long time. Uh, right now, I do see Dark Potato very close to Arclos. They're not going to spot each other out, though, unless a Dark Potato... Yeah, he's just going to swagger out of there. He's not going to care. It's going to be absolutely fine. And I'm just having a look at some of the farm across the board right now. Arclos currently sitting at 26 to the 17 of Dark Potato. So he's been doing fantastic with this jungle Celeste once again. And now they've rotated up into the lane. They want to try and get some poke down and set up a siege onto this turret. They're in a good position to do so, but I don't think they realize that they're in a good position to do so. G2K fairly far away from the turret there. I feel like maybe Lemon and Lime could have done some damage, but they back off because they don't have complete information. Fairly mm -hmm. smartly, I think. It would be a bit bit too bold to really commit to that. I'm just having a look at some of the items coming out right now. Ares decided to go for that Storm Guard banner once, and putting a little bit more damage out. Whereas Dingo decided that his priority is going to be that Fountain of Renewal, some more defensive. Apple actually picks up the Tension Bow. Wow. Not something we're used to seeing on a Ringo. But I guess, again, Lemon and Lime, we know them to be these aggressive playmakers. I guess they want to try and make those plays in the early game. I feel like Celeste, you know, historically has been a very late game focused hero. But when you put her in the jungle, it changes somewhat. and She becomes much more about the early game skirmishes. So getting attention bow on Apful uh, kind of makes sense. You know, they're in a position well, to fight well early on. To me, I just feel like Arc Lost has a surprising amount of... Um, base damage, because when you land a, a Heliogenesis, you have to remember that if you put another one on top of it, you get that Supernova. And even if you don't have that much Crystal Power, that Supernova can do a surprising amount of damage. And on top of that, the base damage on her ultimate is surprisingly high. As well as that, her Core Collapse provides very good crowd control. And then her basic attacks go with Crystal Power as well. So you don't need that much Crystal Power to have an impact in these fights, as long as you're landing your skill shots, which we know our uh -oh. is good at Apple. doing. He is going to get melted there. Arc Lost is going to find a lot of return damage on the start. Potato, look at the auto attack! Just trails across after him. That was pretty funny. Nice. Coming out from Arc Lost, but the action might not be over yet. It's over. It's over. Yeah, they set me up. <laughs> Ares. <laughs> he had the Storm God banner. I thought he might want to keep fighting. It's, but he's it's like, the opposite right. of the genesis of the action. Stop that. You need to stop. The A ability. <laughs> 
the A ability all over the place. So much A's right now. Arc lost. Uh, doing a good job to be able to get that return kill because it took three members to shut down Apfel up in the lane. Then Arc lost just walks in and he's just like, I have found you mortals. And then he lands some crisp A's. Gets a great core collapse once again. And it's the core collapse that impresses me the most because even though it's a big AoE stun, I do feel like it's quite a hard ability to land. It is definitely a hard ability to land, although now the, the cooldown is reduced, uh, which happened fairly recently. You have more chances, yeah. which helps. You do. You do, you do. Decided to go for a broken myth first. Interesting. So, again, somewhat deviating from what we're used to seeing. App full up in the lane, though, getting collapsed on. Oh, he keeps getting caught out, and he has nowhere to run this time. And this time as well, Arc Lost isn't actually there to turn things around. So... Apfel needs to be careful. He's not on Alpha. You don't get to reboot in this situation. Dingo. Whoa, that's a lot of damage. One more would find it. Arklaus needs to be careful, though. That's going to be the wait for it coming across, picking up the kill. Ares, he's tanky enough to get away, but G2K, they're really turning up the heat right now, finding two quick kills. Yeah, they're getting a lot of picks right now. It's this Fortress Glaive combo once again that I feel Lemon and Lime aren't properly respecting that Atfall has rejoined the fight. And I'm yet to see Atfall have an impact on this game just yet. You have the tension bow. This is a great time for you to try and force these fights. Arc Lost isn't afraid to go for these engagements, and you should be grouping up with your team, rotating down into the jungle and trying to make these plays. But right <laughs> now, he's just not. And he's getting called out of position up in the lane over and over and over again. You make it sound like peer pressure. Arc Lost isn't afraid to fight. Why aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's what Ares is saying right now. You know, he's in the jungle with Arc Lost, and he's just like, you know, Apple. You, know, you bought this tension bow. Why aren't you fighting? You should be going for engagement. He's like, I am fighting in the lane, and they're like, and that's why you're getting caught. So <laughs> it's a catch twenty two situation for Apple, but he's gonna throw out the Hellfire Brew out of pure anger towards Ares. God damn it, Ares! Look at what you made me do. <laughs> <laughs> you could just add what the players are saying, right, over the cast, and they could do nothing about it. You know, like, they're just sitting here farming in the lane, and they're all grouping up together, just like, you know what, I'm a really big fan of cheesecake. Oh, yeah, no, I really like cheesecake, too, Apfel says to Ares. Ares turns to his teammates. So instead of lost. casting the game, we're, we're doing, like, narration for the, <laughs> the players. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, game. Dude. Attack oh, the pack, get pops. Let's get Ares, guys! Everyone jumps forward. They're trying to get on top of him. Arc lost in space. He's too far away. We can't find him. Redix is gonna. That, that is tiring. And doing it in an interesting <laughs> way, I feel like just isn't gonna be easy. Oh, look at this, though. Look at where Apple is right now. He's trying to steal away some of the back cams. He's gonna get away with it, and he's gonna get back to base. Really good stuff from Apple. And you know, he's telling to his teammates, guys, do you see that? Do you see that, guys? And they're all just like, shut up, Apple. Let's get back to the game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Invade coming out from G2. They want to steal away these back camps. Yeah, but are they going to be able to? Ares is admittedly taking a lot of damage right off the bat. Redix jumping forward here. That's a core collapse on the Dark Potato. Buy some time. Redix, oh, the Solar Storm comes across. The auto attacks following Helio Genesis flying everywhere. Dingo, he's going to be the next target. What is this turnaround coming in from Lemon and Lime? Oh, the Vanguard, nice. Beautiful play out of these guys. And that actually puts them in the kill lead after a 3 for 0 ace. That was a fantastic turnaround from Lemon and Lime. The use of the Gauntlet coming out from Ares to keep himself alive, stunning up Dingo and drawing his attention away, mean that Atful then comes from base, joins the fight with Arklos, and they are able to turn the fight around onto Dark Potato, and this is where the Tension Bow finally came into effect. Fantastic use of the Power Spike, knowing exactly when they can afford to go for these engagements, but also G2 being a little bit too over-aggressive. They've been winning fight after fight following their previous game, and it is fantastic the way in which they make this work. Really impressive stuff coming out from Lemon and Lime. And finally, they have got themselves the gold lead. The question is, can they maintain this? Because right there, you can argue it was a little bit over-aggressive from G2K. They didn't expect Arc Lost to turn around with such a beautiful core collapse, stopping Dark Potato from finishing up Ares. At the moment, G2K, I feel like their confidence is definitely wavering a little bit after that fight. You can see there, they had an opportunity to maybe jump on Ares, and they didn't, because they're afraid. <laughs> That's because they were talking to each other, they were too busy talking to each other about um, how to pronounce Heliogenesis, because one of them gets hit by it, and they're just like, guys, I keep getting hit by all these Heliogenesi, and he's just like, no, you're getting hit by Heliogenesis, <laughs> and then they're just like, guy, and you, you know that uh, Dingo's just sitting there like, guys, can we not? <laughs>
as Dingo actually goes for the fight. That's not a great time to go for a fight, though. Redix just took a Hellfire Brew and an Achilles shot. Dingo actually eats a lot of damage there as well, so nice oh, counter engage. So <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. That... That was disgusting. Oh, man. That's so good. Arc lost with the plays. Managing to land another snipe. That's his second one of the series. And he just insta-pops Redix right there. And now they're in a great position to set up the siege. How do you beat Lemon and Lime? Because their draft is like crazy. Did you not right? see game two? But no, 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 no. It does. I'm sitting in a series. No, 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 no. In a best no, 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 of three, no, no, no. in a best of three, how do you beat these guys? Because game three, they just pull out Celeste. To be fair, to be fair, Ringo and both of us expected Celeste. And as if a casters can predict that, then you would expect professional teams and players to predict it as well. So you would imagine that. Um, G2 came in with, with a plan and believed that uh, the Glaive would work just as effectively against the Celeste as it did against the Kestrel. They're both low mobility, uh, they're both easy to catch out of position, and if you think about it, Celeste is even easier than a, Cele uh, than a Kestrel is, because uh, Celeste can't go invisible, and... Uh, but the difference is, Arc Lost Crowd Control is a little bit easier uh -oh. to land as Ares. He's in trouble. He is massively caught out. That is a two man core collapse, though. Some decent AoE going down from Arc Lost in space, but can't quite get the positioning safely enough to keep the fight going. Reddick's gonna eat one of those Heliogenesis. Oh, Apple bringing some damage, but Dark Potato comes across, knocks Arc Lost in space into the team, but the turnaround is there. Apple, look at his health. You can't see it because it's nearly not there. Wow. Really impressive stuff. Uh, Ares was caught out of position right there. Dark Potato overcommits just a little bit. Takes a lot of damage from Arc Lost, who is currently 6, 2, and 0, and is sitting on that Broken Myth and Eve of Harvest, too. Is in a great position right now. Tyrant's Monocle actually done for Apple. Really interesting itemization choice right here. Going from the Tension Bow into the Tyrant's Monocle. He really doesn't have that much uh, weapon power to take advantage of the crit. Can't say I'm a massive fan. I just prefer the Sorrow Blade, I think it's a better pickup. But, what do I know, that's why Apfel's here, and I'm on the other side of the desk. Right now, though, lead's still in the favor of Lemon and Lime, and the question is what they can now do moving forward. They could look to play around the Gold Miner. Uh, it is about a minute until the Kraken spawns, and given that they do, they have hit a pretty good spike with both Apfel and Arclos, this would be a great time for them to try and force a fight. And you have to remember that as the game progresses, this... Reddix on Vox is going to get stronger and stronger, but Dark Potato face checks. Oh, that means he takes so much damage right off the bat. Solar Storm coming across. The Heliogenesis doesn't land, though. Reddix, he's going to be the next target. Look at the damage. He's got no assistance. Can't get away. Wait for it. Did some good work there, but not enough to pick up a kill. And you can see now, Lemon and Lime, they're just going to back up, maybe head towards this lane. Hard to find much off the back of that unless it's a gold mine, though, because they've already taken this first turret. They do have a lot of poke available from Arc Loss, so they can set up a siege quite comfortably. Look at the minion wave as well. It's coming towards the tower. They have Apfold. This should be a pretty easy turret secure. Does take a lot of damage from the turret, but it's too scary for Dark Potato to really contest there, so Arc Loss in space is able to finish things off. And it looks like Lemon and Lime just gonna back away for now. Kraken spawns in a few seconds. Might see some fights coming across. Dark Potato wants to start something off here. Arc Lost does take a decent chunk of damage, but he's got boots to back away. Apfel, he cannot kite, though. It's two versus two. Arc Lost, quite low right now, but he's got the kite ability. If he can just get these core collapses down, he finds another one, but he's silenced. Wait for Ooh. it. Does so much work. Ares, he is going to fall as well, I would imagine. Can he get Redix in time? Not quite. It's going to be the ace going to the way of G2K. Ace. Lemon and Lime, they bit off a bit too much there. They should have backed off. I think they were trying to back off, but the, the chase coming out from Dark Potato was actually really good. Notice that the Warhorn was used from Dingo very early on. So I think they had a good idea that the Tribrush, uh, or at the very least, uh, that Lemon and Lime were around the Kraken area. So G2 tried to force the chase because they knew they had the health advantage. So they were able to catch Atfall as he was trying to back. Uh, they were able to knock Arclos out of position, so he took a lot of damage very early on. And even though initially it was a 2 for 3, uh, or it was a 2v3 advantage in favor of Lemon and Lime, things just kind of descended into madness, and Redix with that fantastic silence, as you pointed out, was really what turned the fight around, because Arclos just couldn't keep spamming those abilities, so really impressive stuff. Yeah, very, very nice. Interesting to see moving forward if... Dark Potato, I, I feel like, is, is the key thing there. Like, if he can get engages like that, 
opportunistically, then maybe they can set some things up. But Lemon and Lime, I don't feel like they're, after seeing how badly that, that mistake of going too deep cost them, I don't feel like they're going to make that mistake too easily yet again. Or are they Apple? Look at his positioning so far up. But there's a change on the Arc Lost in space. They know he's doing so much oh. damage right now, but he gets a Solar Storm off anyway. Everyone is very low on G2K. Apple oh. goes down, though. He can't find the kills. Ares is going to fall. It's back-to-back -back aces for G2K as they pick up the Kraken. That is so sad for Lemon and Lime, simply because that damage from Arcos was absolutely phenomenal, but because he was the one that was caught out of position, that was all he was allowed to do. The best he could hope for was getting as much down, uh, damage down and then Apfel cleaning up the fight. But Apfel just couldn't do it because he was in a two versus three. All of the attention was turned on to him and he just couldn't figure out what the best target to focus was. It was so unfortunate for Lemon Line. That could have been such a great fight for them and really could have gained them so much momentum. But G2 were the ones that came out ahead with a fantastic Fountain of Renault, just barely keeping everyone alive oh, with Arclos. some great target focus. And now they're going for Arclos once more. He is in a really bad position. Solar Storm, just I, I think maybe to try and slow them with Frostburn, is not going to work out. Now it's a two versus three with a Kraken. That catch might mean the end for Lemons and Limes. Dark Potato goes for the dive, trying to get onto Apfel. He wants to kite this one out, but he doesn't have any assistance. Ares is too far away to help him. Can Apfel get one? Dark Potato finally closes the gap, picks up the kill. Ares, he's gonna have to run away. Kraken picks up one turret off the back. Arc lost, still 10 seconds off spawn. It's at least two turrets for G2K. They're starting to pull ahead in this game in a very big way. Lemon and Lime, their backs are against the wall. They've come so close to moving forward to the semifinals as one of these new teams in the league. Can they pull it off here? They need to defend. Look at the turret, it's going down very quickly. Redix trying to focus that one down. He might die for it, but the Kraken is meaning that the attention needs to be split. Redix, he's kiting out Ares. He might even be able to find a kill here, but Apple finally respawns. They're gonna be able to turn onto the Kraken. The game is not over yet, but big, big push for the side of G2K. They got so much off the back of that. They certainly did, and that Kraken was just so effective for them because now all G2 need to do is be patient, wait for the next Kraken, get a good team fight, and then they can easily close out this game. The, the big thing for them is they need to respect the damage coming out from Arclos. If they eat too much poke, things go horribly wrong for them, but as long as they continue to focus all of their attention onto Arclos and collapse down onto him, shut him out of the fight very early on, then they can continue to come out ahead. And I feel like a large part of it is this build path that Apple has decided to go for. With the Tension Bow, it was very um, uh, based around the early to mid game. Uh, Lemon and Lime had a good early to mid game, but then they didn't transition that because they had a few too many bad fights. And now this Tension Bow is really starting to fall off and Apple isn't able to have the same sort of impact at this point in the game as he would if he had gone the Sorrow Blade route. I'm inclined to agree with you. This is a big concern. I mean, look at the last fight, right? By the turret with the Kraken pushing, Apple kited for so long. That fight was like 15 seconds long, but he only at the very last second was able to get a kill. That's how long it took him to kill one of the, the Roamer, you know, a relatively weak member of G2K. That's not really good enough. You have to be picking up these kills quicker, and he just doesn't have the damage to do it. Well, let's see if he has the damage now. It's a fight's about to kick off. Good gauntlet does stun up Dingo and Redix. Redix very low, but Ares and Arclos can't get onto him. The Solar Storm blocked by the others. Arclos, he's trying to kite backwards. He has a lot of damage, but the Dark Potato finishes up the kill. Guys, G2K proving Rome is hashtag wrong. Moving forward to the semifinals. I say that, they also proved me wrong. Very impressive game three and adaption in game two to take this series against Lemon and Lime. Wow, G2 demonstrating their stuff, and it they definitely have a lot of it. It was a fantastic series, very action-packed, very tense, and I think we can all agree it was the most exciting series of the evening. Lemon and Lime bringing out some very innovative strats, and just a couple misplays, I feel. They, they made mistakes of their draft in Game 2, uh, and I feel like that they just made a couple misplays in, in Game 3. And it was simply a matter of experience, I think, a large factor that G2 were able to come out ahead. They were very calm in the sense that even though they were losing fights early on, it didn't matter to them. They realized that they could just change up their strategy as the game progressed. That's exactly what they did. They had good vision control. They had a, uh, they were catching Lemon and Lime out of position over and over and over again. 
and I do think that uh, it is this difference in experience. But Lemon and Lime looking super promising. I'm really excited to see them in the next VGL qualifiers, and I think they have a promising future ahead of them. I've got to agree with you, and man, did they deliver on a series in any case. I can't wait to see how things move forward, but before we see any more of Lemon and Lime next qualifier, we've still got semis, we've still got finals, and today we still have the quarterfinals for North America. We're going to be bringing those to you very shortly to run us through what we can expect. Let's pass it back to our analysts. Hope